What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Two Pops to Handle. I hope you're all having a fabulous week as per usual. Today is a very exciting episode. It's very special. So for three reasons. Um, number one, we're no longer congested. I can finally breathe out of my nose. I don't sound like I'm clogging my nose like last week. Um, I listened back to last week's episode and I was like, wow, this is so annoying. So to all the people who listened to last week, thank you so much. You guys are real ones for listening to that because I was like, was I okay? Literally, I was fine. I never got sick, never had a fever, nothing. I just, allergies, I, I guess. I don't know. It was, it was, you know, we got through it. So we're good now. But so, you know, no longer congested. Number two reason why this is a very exciting episode is our 10th episode. Feels like, you know, it's kind of like a milestone. We are in the double digits. And not only is it our 10th episode, but it's our final episode of 2023. So when I was looking at the calendar last week and I was like, oh, I feel like some people like take a break. Some people as if I'm like some big famous influencer, but people take a break usually between like Christmas and New Year's and they come back in the new year. But I was like, I have no reason to take a break. I'm home and I would just be sitting on my couch anyway. And I genuinely just enjoy doing this every week. And I also felt like ending the year with 10 episodes in my brain. I'm not a math person, but I'm a numbers person. And with that, I mean like, I love like when things even out, like when there's like an even number of something or if there's like, if it just, I don't know if like, I, I just, again, I'm not a math person. I just, I like numbers. So having our first 10 episodes perfectly ending at the end of 2023, I didn't plan it like that, but like, let's just give myself like a pat on the back and pretend like I did. Um, but yeah, so we are 10th episode. That feels like a really big milestone that's kind of exciting. We're in the double digits and we're only going up from here. So I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas or if you don't celebrate, just a wonderful December 25th. We laid low this year. We stayed in the city and just kind of bopped around. We went downtown to Brooklyn Bagel and got some bagels for breakfast. We did our presents. Then we went and we saw the tree. I know we, we braved Rockefeller Center on Christmas, but we figured everybody leaves the city on Christmas so let's do the touristy things on Christmas and honestly it was not as packed as I thought it would be so very nice we went to the tree we went to Hudson Yards and just saw the lights there then we came home made some dinner hung out popped an edible watched Barbie and that was our Christmas night it was honestly fabulous cannot complain 10 out of 10 um and just like that like I said last episode of 2023 New Year's Eve is around the corner. A few episodes back, I said New Year's Eve is my favorite day of the year. I just, I love New Year's Eve. I love the idea of like leaving the year behind us and looking back on the year and reflecting on it and looking forward to the year ahead. Cheesy as it sounds, I don't know. It's just always my favorite holiday, my favorite day of the year. And like I said a few weeks ago, we didn't have New Year's Eve plans. And that has, that has changed as I expected, but it kind of went from zero to a hundred. I kind of expected that we would just kind of find a bar in New York, maybe get like an open bar package, splurge a little and just like party, get home, like get order bacon, egg and cheese. Well, egg and cheese for me, I don't eat meat, like breakfast sandwiches the next day and like call it 2024. Now I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> so we are going to see Kelly Clarkson on this Saturday, so the 30th. So not on, so it's like New Year's Eve Eve. We actually won tickets to the show from the Kelly Clarkson show. She did a giveaway and she did uh, flight credits, tickets to her show. I got a sick carry-on bag, a ring camera, and a, uh, a toiletry bag. So it was like all travel essentials. The ring camera was supposed to like make sure your, ho your home was safe while you were away, I guess, which like I get it, but I live in New York, so didn't need that. Uh, gifted it to my sister and brother-in-law. But that being said, we're going to Vegas this weekend. So we leave on Friday. I'm so excited. The longest I've ever been I want it was like under 48 hours and I am we're going for four days this time so we're going for a very long amount of time so I'm excited even though Vegas is so go 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 I'm very excited for it to kind of be like okay we can spread out what we want to do and you know take our not take our time because obviously it's a high-paced environment but just kind of like bop around do our thing we don't have to like get everything done in one or two days we have we have two full days and then like two half days. So excited. I can't wait to see Kelly. We're going to find some, probably like a drag bar for New Year's Eve. And yeah, we're just, like I said, kind of went from zero to 100 with New Year's plans. But you know what? When the stars align, the stars align. So I will definitely be vlogging a little bit on my TikTok. Something in the new year. We're going to get into like resolutions and things like that a little bit later in the episode. Here's a little sneak peek. But I want to 
create more is always my goal every year. The top of my list is to create more. This year I've created content more than I ever have starting the podcast. And I've just been like playing around more with video editing and what I want to capture and how I want to film things. And I think in the new year, I kind of want to start doing some, not like YouTube full fledged vlogs, but like little TikTok vlogs. I did a jingle ball one. I did one of when we walked from the top to the bottom. So just like, you know, capturing moments, capturing memories. 2024 is my last year of my twenties. I turned 30 in 2025 and I'm like, you know what? I want to save these memories. I want to have these memories to look back on one day and be like, wow, look at what I did this year. Do I wish I started it earlier? Sure. But we can't change the past. So like it is what it is. Moving forward, I want to, like I said, just create more. And like I said, that being said, tying back to where we started, I'm going to do a whole little travel vlog of the weekend. So head over to my personal TikTok. It's just at Andrew Nucatola. Uh, and yeah, you'll see some content there. I'll be posting on my Instagram, both in the podcast and on my personal. So if you want to follow along this weekend to see what crazy trouble we get into, make sure you're following us on all socials. And yeah, I'm super excited. This episode is going to be a little bit different. So I have just two quick little like timely pop culture things to chat about. And then we're going to look at 2023 from top to bottom. We're going to just kind of go through. I have yeses and I have messes for the entire year. I also have my 2023 top Drew releases. So I picked out my top five albums, my top five songs. We're going to go through all the pop culture moments, everything I loved, everything I hated. And we're just going to chat and we're going to have, you know, it's going to be girls being girls, like a little FaceTime call. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited putting this together. I was so stoked. I was like, wait, like, you know, when you like look at something, you're like, that was this year. Like, I, I feel like going through this list, I hope some of you guys have the same feeling I did when I was like, that was literally in a calendar year. Like that was still 2023 because girl, it was a year. Um, but before we hop into that, some more like timely things. First things first, if you're listening to this the day that this is uploaded, so December 27th, Gypsy Rose gets released tomorrow, December 28th, 2023. She's already, her stepmom has reported that she will be go, doing a spa day the first day she gets out. So they're going to go get her hair done, her, a manicure, a pedicure, a nice little girl's day. They're going to go shopping. And then allegedly this weekend, she will be at the Chiefs game in attempt to meet Taylor Swift. Gypsy Rose being a Swifty just, it just makes sense in my mind. And I am, I'm very excited to see if you know, if the stars align for Gypsy, I mean, she'll be out of jail for three days. So I don't really know. I don't know if, you know, she's going to be able to find, to meet Taylor in this situation. Like, I, I don't really know, but I'm, ex I, I'm tuned in. I am ready. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, Gypsy, whatever is to come, I'm signed up for. I'm very excited for this book. I've said it every week. And yeah, guys, we are so close. Gypsy is almost free. And I can't wait. And I know that there's an audience for it. I know that people, I'm not the only one. I'm not crazy who just like counting down for the days for this girl to get out of jail. There's a community of us. So to all of my Gypsy Rose gals, our day is coming. <laughs> and the second thing that's more of a timely manner. So I watched Saltburn. <laughs> I watched it on Christmas Eve, maybe. It doesn't matter the day. I watched it sometime over the weekend. Oh my God. Um, so first and foremost, I loved it. Let's get that out of the way. I thought it was so good. I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was visually so well done. I thought the actors were great. I loved the cast. I thought they all owned it. I thought they were fantastic. That being said, if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want spoilers, skip ahead, maybe like three minutes. I don't have much to say, um, but just, this is your warning. There will be some spoilers. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> so my main thing I will say, I think going into it as blind as you can kind of makes it more fun. All I knew that there was about this movie was that there was some type of gay lore. There was some type of like infatuation, obsession within the movie. I knew Jacob Elordi was in it and that was really it. And boy, was I taken by surprise. I will say I appreciated that it wasn't that hard of a movie to follow. Like it wasn't, you didn't have to really like you had to pay attention, but you didn't have to sit there and like think about things. It was pretty much like it all kind of lays like rolls out into each other and like makes sense in the end. And as it's happening, you're kind of you can at least I could I could piece together what was happening while I was watching it. I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Like this kid is crazy. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was so good. 
the whole bathtub scene, if you don't, if, again, if you're listening to this and you don't want spoilers, I'm, I'm again, I'm warning you, just fast forward a little bit, but um, when he drinks the bathtub water after Jacob Elordi, like, jerks off in the bathtub, everyone's going crazy over it. I get why it's, like, a little jarring, but, like, I didn't think it was, like, that crazy. I thought the scene where he literally has sex with Jacob Elordi's character's grave was much more alarming than the fact that he drank his bath water or like whatever after he drained his bath. I was like, why is everybody freaking out about that when he's literally has his dick six feet under, like ejaculating into this tombstone? Like, why is that not getting more attention? Not to, not to mention, it was his idea. It was, I'm, his name slipped in my mind and I feel so unprepared saying that, but the actor literally, it was his idea to do that scene. Like, it was a lot. Halfway through the movie, I was like, who the fuck directed this though? I was like, I need to know who was thinking of it. The scene actually that it was, was Oliver's birthday party so if you've seen the movie or if you haven't whatever he they throw him like pretty much like a midsummer themed birthday party and he's like walking through the party and i was just like how do they conceptualize this and it was in that moment i was like i need to know who directed it lo and behold it was emerald fennel who if you don't know who that is if you've seen barbie she is the actress who plays midge the pregnant barbie in the movie and she also directed promising young woman which came out in 2020 i want to say it was yeah it was definitely a pandemic movie so it was 2020 actually i think it was around christmas it came out because i remember watching it in the winter uh, my friend jocelyn hi jocelyn if you're listening she suggested it to me and it was promising young woman was fantastic i absolutely loved it but once i realized that she directed both of those films i was like oh okay i was like it makes sense now like her her vision is always a little funky a little blurred so i was like okay the pieces all add up it all makes sense now it, it i get it and i see the vision i will say i did not i had no idea that she was in barbie until i looked her up that night and i was like oh my god that's so cool then it made sense because margot robbie is a producer on saltburn so i was like okay there's a little connection i love finding little connections within like the background and like i said a few episodes ago i really want to become more in tune with like who directs things who produces things who writes it who this who that so this is kind of me embarking on that journey where normally i feel like when i would watch a movie i wouldn't really care who directed it but watching this i was like i need to know whose fucked up mind was behind this and i'm glad that i did because i was able to find these fun connections so the journey is starting of me being a little more in tune with the behind the scenes people and that's kind of that's my salt burn um reaction and whatever i do highly suggest it i mean it was so well done i thought it's definitely a little confusing there was like some parts where i'd be like i could see where people would be like well, what what the fuck like this was why am I watching this or like what is going on but I think overall it was honestly 10 out of 10 for me I have no notes absolutely loved it uh go watch it it's on Amazon Prime and it's free so if you have Amazon Prime you are good to go and we all have Amazon Prime come on let's who are we kidding <laughs> but like I said just those two quick little more timely pop culture things and now without further ado it is time to hop in to the 2023 Drew releases. So like I said, I have my five top albums, my five top songs, and this was, the albums were easier than the songs, I will say. I, I've said it before, I'm an album person. I love a full rounded body of work. I love when people, you know, tell a story through an album or there's an overall theme of an album. Not just, I don't need a sound to an album per se, and I'll dive into that more when I get to one of the albums i don't need it to sound actually two of the albums i don't need a cohesive sound i just want like a message a story just give me something where like it makes sense as a whole so that being said my favorite album of the year was renee rap snow angel surprise surprise i mean if you listen to the podcast if you follow me anywhere i love renee rap she is absolutely one of my favorite artists right now she has made her way to my top list without a doubt with her ep even her singles before the ep came out like i'm on board the renee rap train snow angel is just a perfect album the bonus tracks are fantastic i i, I just i mean if you if you've listened to any other episode i've mentioned how much i love the bitch just a fantastic fucking album no note 10 out of 10. My second album of the year is Troy Sivan, Something to Give Each Other, another album I've talked about. That was my first yes of the show, actually. My first episode, my first yes was Troy's album, and it has 
rung true. It is still in my top. I just, I can't get enough. It is fantastic. Troy just doesn't miss to me. He is, he makes perfect pop music, which is, speaks right to my soul. So number two, Troy Sivan, something to give each other. Number three is an album that I actually, not that I forgot that it came out this year, but it's one of those things where I'm like, oh my God, that was this year. And it's an album that does kind of give into that, doesn't need to have a cohesive sound vibe. And that is Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation. Now, I'm not going to get into the promotion behind it and the way she fell off the face of the earth after there was so much potential for it and potentially her best album she'd ever put out. But that being said, fucking love the album. I think the concept of AM and PM in this of the album where, you know, the beginning of the album, the first half is a little not not ballads, but like it has that more like slower kind of like I don't know, there's 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 the shift at from a.m. to p.m. and I love that idea. I love that concept where p.m. gets a little more, you know, a little more dancey, a little vibey, and it just kind of gives you like that feeling of like a full complete day almost, uh, which also reminds me of Melodrama, which is my favorite album of all time, which takes place not in the course of a day, but in the course of like a party, that album. So if you didn't know that, if you listen to Lord's Melodrama album, it starts with her leaving her house to go to a party and it's like all the feelings that you feel seeing your ex at a party and this kind of gave me that vibe of like the full day or like going through the motions of you know all of your feelings and this and that of you know with an ex and falling in love falling out of love loved it fantastic album next up on my list olivia rodrigo guts no denying i mean if you're watching this on youtube you can see olivia literally in my mirror behind me it's sour but don't be fooled guts is up there with sour of some of my favorite albums i absolutely love the album one of the most anticipated albums of the year i would say and she absolutely delivered i mean the she definitely leaned a little bit more into that like punky rock vibe and i think it works i think her voice is perfect for it i think it fits that more mature vibe i feel like she's looking for and though i mean her audience is always gonna have that little like that you know it's gonna always be an underlying feel of like the the teeny bop whatever you know crowd but i think she does a really good job at have i feel like her fan base doesn't necessarily match her sound not in a bad way it's just like when i saw her a few weeks at jingle a weeks ago at jingle ball it was all little girls singing bad idea right and all these like rock songs like uh, i mean like all american bitch like that's not necessarily a song that little like teenage girls would listen to i mean who am i to say you know actually i i take that back who am i to say what teenagers can listen to that being said, Guts, Olivia Rodrigo is number four on my list. And number five on my list is Chapel Roan, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. This album, I Chapel wasn't on my radar at all. I didn't know who she was before this year. Honestly, didn't know she got announced for Olivia's Guts tour. Didn't look into her. And then, oh, another shout out to Jocelyn in this episode. You know, it's very Jocelyn coded. She told me, she was like, Andrew, you have to listen to the song Feminine Omenon. And I was like, okay, sure. I listened to the song and I was like, oh my fucking God, who is this bitch? And I immediately saved her album and I was like, where have I been? I've been missing out on this music that she has been putting out. She's been around for a few years, but this is this album has been like a bigger kind of, there's been a bigger roar about it and it is so rightfully deserved. This album is the, what I was thinking earlier when I said an album doesn't need a cohesive sound. She really dove into a few different, not necessarily genres, but different just like vibes. There's some dancier, there's slower, there's some that show more of her like fun producing, you know, pop music side. There's some where she's doing more vocal focused songs. I just think as a whole, the album is so well done and touches so many different types of music and sounds and feels and just the way that she did it is just so well done. And if you have not listened to this album, go listen to it. She's going to blow up. She's opening for Olivia Rodrigo, literally the first leg of her US tour and it ends the day before the New York shows. And part of me is like, do I go to Boston to see her open for Olivia? Like it, 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 it might happen because I just, I love this album so much. And I think seeing her open for Olivia, my four and five albums of the year, like I feel like it would just, it would be like a really fun full circle moment. So TBD on that. But those are my top five albums. So Renee Rapp, Troy Sivan, Miley Cyrus, Olivia Rodrigo, Ch Olivia Rodrigo, and Chapel Roan. So 
If you haven't listened to any of them, I highly suggest them. They are fantastic albums, and I'm very excited to see where my list is for next year. Now, my top five songs, I was, when I was making this, I was actually surprised that not all of these songs are from my top five albums, but I think there's a lot to say about, like, just because you love an album doesn't mean it has to be your favorite songs of the year, you know? Like, it doesn't need to necessarily correlate. But when I say that there's two Renee rap songs on this list, don't come for me. Coming in at number one is My House by Beyonce. Came out of nowhere, was not expecting it. Definitely not a sound that I was expecting to hear from her, but oh my god. I, I talked about it when it dropped. I, ugh, I can't get enough. It is like I predicted. It is already in my top 100 songs of the year. It has literally affected my Apple Music Replay 2023, which had came out weeks ago before the song even came out, and it is already in my, in my top for the year. So if that gives you any idea of how often I'm listening to this song, I love the sound. I love the feel. I love the switch up in the middle. Ugh, it's just, I love it. It's so good. My second favorite song of the year is Willow by Renee Rapp. This is actually her favorite song on the album too. She said that in multiple interviews and it kind of dives into more of her R&B side. She's a huge fan of R&B music and it does kind of show through in her music, but this song, she says she really went for it and you can feel it like in the verses. So good. Her vocals on it are fantastic when it has that like, more of that like, that rhythm to the verses and then those beautiful vocals on the chorus oh it's so good i love it love 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 it when i met her at she did like an album signing at rough trade and i went because i was like well i might as well go it's i want to buy the album anyway so why not go meet the girl and um i told her i was like oh my god whatever you put in willow please put in every song and she literally was like oh it's my favorite on the album she was like so excited that somebody brought it up so it's just so good my third song is another Renee rap song, and it is Talk Too Much. I mean, if you've heard the song, you get it. The, the like, switch up at the end without, like, guitar when it comes in. The message of the song. Like, I mean, I, we've all been in the situation where I'm like, oh my god, am I talking too much? Like, am I saying too much? Should I say that? Did I say the right thing? We've all been there. We've all overthought everything we've ever said. And this song just it, it encapsulates that feeling so well. As somebody who I, I think about everything I've ever said in my life, it's just perfect message. The song is so good. Her vocal ability on it is so good. It's so much fun live. And yeah, it, I couldn't have this list without that song, those two songs really on this list. My number four song is the is Princess Diana featuring Nicki Minaj. So Ice Spice and Nicki. I mean, it's my number two most played song of the year. It is just so much fun. Nikki's verse is insane. I, I loved the song already without Nikki. I loved the original Princess Diana. So when they were releasing a remix of it, I was like, oh, I'm in because you guys all know I'm a barb. So they did not fail. The music video is so good. Like, they just both look so stunning in the video. The verses are insane. It's just such a good flow, such a good beat. There's no denying that, like, Ice Spice had like a killer 2023 and this song is truly just like a cherry on top of her career amongst so many other things she did this year. I mean, she literally put out a song with Nicki Minaj and Taylor Swift in the first year of her career really blowing up. I mean, she's really that girl. So I, uh, yeah, Princess Diana featuring Nicki Minaj, Chef's Kiss, fantastic. And my fifth and final song of my top five songs of the year is X's by Tate McRae. Again, if you listen to that podcast, if you follow me anywhere, it's no surprise. I had this moment the other night where I was getting really annoyed at how people keep saying that she's an industry plant and whether she is or not, girl, plant the seeds. I'm watering the plant. I am literally, I could care less if this girl's an industry plant. I don't think she is. She's been around for a bit and like just because she's blowing up now doesn't mean she's an industry plan. People just can't admit that like new people can come into the scene and be talented. That being said, I, I love the song. It, everyone knows that it blew up. It is so good. And yeah, just uh, again, another artist that had like a killer year. And I think 2024 for Tate McRae is going to be even bigger. And I cannot wait to see if what's to come. She's doing her tour. She's playing MSG, which is like nuts. So I don't have tickets yet, but I'll be there. Me and Thomas are literally obsessed with her. But yeah, I and I think people who say they don't like Tate McRae, I think they're just looking for attention. She's so good. Have you seen her dance? Like, ugh, I'm obsessed. And with that, those are my 2023 Drew releases, top five albums, top five songs. Let me know what your favorite albums and songs of the year were. I love to see, you know, where people, where you landed. And they, I want it to be songs that came out this year because realistically, like, 
I list Renaissance would have been my number one album of the year, but it came out last year. And though I listened to it the most of any album, it didn't come out this year. So I, I want songs and albums that came out within the calendar year. So let me know what your albums and songs of the year were. Let me know what you're looking forward to in 2024. I'm cannot wait for new music. Anyone who knows me knows like New Music Friday. I'm always looking forward to it. So just I feel like there's going to be so much new music in 2024 and I'm so excited. And with that, that brings us to my 2023 Yes and Mess review. So essentially what I did is I went through and I broke down my, my yeses and my messes of 2023. There might be some things left out that maybe to you it was important, but to me, sorry, didn't make my list. Um, and some of these I'm going to dive into more. Some of them I'm going to just kind of brush over and mention them. Doesn't mean I like something more. Doesn't mean I like something less. It is just... I only have so much time to record a podcast. Like I, you know, I can't, I got, I gotta, you know, keep things moving. But with that being said, let's dive in. Let's, we, as we always do, we're going to start with our yeses of 2023. First yes of the year, Rihanna Super Bowl. It was her first performance in years. I mean, it was Apple Music's first halftime show. So that was exciting to see what they were going to do. It was a whole new feel for the Super Bowl show with more of the, I feel like the camera work was really like heavy on this one, where in past years it wasn't as in tune. I mean, the drones, the way she was, the stages were flying and like there was so much cinematography within the show itself, let alone Rihanna literally announcing she's pregnant within four seconds of it starting and then going on to do this crazy performance. She had the Fenty Beauty uh, call out when she, you know, did the uh, blotting pad, which shot up her Google searches. Like the most genius thing she could have done. If Rihanna is anything, she is a businesswoman. And I will, you know, I'll forgive her for not releasing an album this year because she was pregnant and because she's just a genius. Like that little call out to Fenty Beauty, so smart. As soon as she did it, I was like, it's done. Like she just, their searches went crazy. Like she's a genius and I loved it. My second yes of the year, and this is something that I was like, holy shit, that was this year, is Ariana DeBose at the BAFTAs. Angela Bassett did the thing, her little thing. You know, when it happened, we were like, what the fuck is this? Now looking back at it, she was just having fun. Like, you know what? Like, who cares? It was such a blip in time at the moment. It was obviously like a huge deal. It was all over the news. Everybody was making memes. But now looking back at it, I'm like, she was just like having fun and doing her thing. Like, who cares? And she continued to have like a killer year. So she obviously didn't like hurt her career. Not that it should have or I thought that it would. But it was such a moment where we were like, what the fuck am I watching? Which I understand. As human beings, we react to things immediately. We're just like, we're, as we, we have that like instant satisfaction of being like, I love this or I hate this. We don't really let things marinate anymore. And that's honestly just because we have everything in the palm of our hand. So I get it. But looking back at it now, like it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was funny. Was it a good intro? No, like it wasn't necessarily a great thing, but it was fun. It definitely, it, it's not a mess for me. It was a moment this year and I loved it. <laughs> Moving down the list, Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> her skiing trial. All I'm going to say is we lost a half a day of skiing. And with that, we're moving on. <laughs> we had Kim Cattrall on and just like that. And as much as I wish the cameo was more intertwined into the show and like she actually was with the girls, I think it was kind of fun that she was like, I'll do it, but I'm not filming with these girls. And she just filmed a scene in the back of a limo, got a, I think her check was over a million dollars for her like 16 second phone call cameo. She didn't have to go on the set with the girl. She didn't have to table read for multiple episodes. She made one phone call got a fat check and then like kept it pushing and then she with the face of skins like come on you you gotta give props or props are due kim cattrall absolute yes this year we can't talk about 2023 without talking about barbenheimer i mean i personally haven't seen oppenheimer but it was a moment like come on it was such a those two movies being released on the same day it was it was everywhere the the, the people the real heroes of the year are the people who sat through those two movies back to back in the theaters like the, you have more patience than i do i saw barbie in theaters absolutely loved it i just watched it over the weekend for the second time it just got better but i mean this year really was like the year of barbie moving on from barbenheim i mean the barbie movie took over this year it was everywhere and it, as it should be 
the press tour outfits were insane the way that her margot robbie stylists were matching her to old barbie dolls and giving those call outs everybody was wearing pink everywhere it was just such a moment and i don't remember i feel like the last time we had a movie like this was like twilight or the hunger games like this was like such a move a moment in movies that i'm so glad that i got to live through and i mean the movie itself is fantastic if you haven't seen it i don't know what you're waiting for it's on hbo max fantastic movie 10 out of 10 the soundtrack the acting the attention to detail fantastic i feel like i'm preaching to a choir i'm sure everybody who's listened to this has seen barbie but on the off chance you haven't get on it go watch the movie you will not be let down uh moving forward i did a whole episode segment on this but Britney Spears' book, obviously a yes of the year. Now, my girl, Beyonce, cannot, cannot, cannot talk about 2023 without Queen B. Let alone the Renaissance Tour, the best show I've ever been to, craziest show, I like, ever. She did the tour, she did her whole little segment with Blue Ivy, which was just, like, insane. Like, having Blue come out and dance with her every night, and seeing it unfold in the movie of her being like, I didn't want Blue to do it. Then she did it. People were making fun of her. So she went back and did it better. I mean, come on. The movie came out. She was doing all of these appearances. She went to Taylor's freaking premiere. Taylor went to her premiere. She was just like in the streets of New York walking around her office, which like, what the fuck? Insane. Then she just did that appearance in Brazil. Like she is just letting us in more than she ever has. And I think this year has been such a new leaf for Beyonce and for us Beyonce fans. And it was just, we were fed so much this year. We still don't have the visuals. We still don't have the live album, but really was just like a year filled with Beyonce. And we are just so blessed to be alive at the same time as Beyonce Giselle Knowles Carter. Another woman that we could not get enough of this year. I, you guys know where I'm going with this. Taylor Swift. Come on. I mean, yeah. Started off the year. I mean, let's talk about things that happened this year being crazy. She dated Maddie Healy this year. She made her first public appearance literally at the 1975 show right before the Everest tour started and had that whole little fling after she broke up with her six-year relationship with Joe Alwyn. Like, crazy way to start the year for Taylor Swift to then kick off the biggest tour of her career. The Obviously, the Eras tour, which was a fantastic show i mean she put her all into that moving forward through that she released two albums while on tour speak now taylor's version 1989 taylor's version she's now in this whole new love thing with travis kelsey she released the Everest tour movie she's times person of the year she's spotify global artist whatever the fucking title was i mean come on absolute yes for the year taylor swift killed it this year she was on top of her game being a taylor swift fan is so much fun and i am so terrified for what's to come for 2024 but also very excited i mean we know reputation's coming debut's gonna come it's just like you never know what she's gonna do so who knows what's to come for 2024 for taylor swift but 2023 was a knockout year for her and i i love it i'm just i i love seeing that taylor swift is just like somehow continuing to just like go on this roll and this high horse of just like slaying the fucking game snaps all around and my final yes of the year, I have no comment on it. Or we're not going to talk about it. All I'm going to say, Donald Trump's mugshot. <laughs> and moving on to my messes of the year. So these are my things that I was just like, well, A, either like, what the fuck? Or B, like, can we, let's cut this. So starting off, 2023 was literally the year of divorce. We had Sofia Vergara and Joe Manganiello, Reese Witherspoon and Jim Toth, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner, Ariana Grande and Dalton Gomez, Cardi B and Offset, Britney Spears and Sam, Hugh Jackman and his wife. I mean, it was literally just like non-stop breakups, divorces. Like, it was crazy. I don't know what was in the water, what was in the air, but like, I was marked safe. I'm so we're still, me and Thomas are still good. We're still together. <laughs> but like, it was really like the year of breakups and divorce and it was crazy and I don't like that you know I, I love love I want people to be happy and again I know it's not realistic it shit happens but like this was a weird year for relationships I even I don't want to talk about them and say they were weird pairings but Kendall Jenner Brad Bunny Timothy Chalamet Kylie Jenner like some weird couples also getting together but I, again not going into that because they are not messes I'm putting them on the putting that out there now I'm not saying either of those couples are a mess it was just a pairing i didn't see coming back to what i was saying year of divorce moving on as more like relationship drama 
I am not somebody who watches Vanderpump Rules anymore. I watched the first two seasons live and then I just kind of stopped watching. But uh, Scandaval, crazy situation. What the fuck? Moving down the list, the SAG strike. Not, and when I say SAG strike, I don't mean that like the strike itself was a mess. I was fine without TV shows, movies. Like I understood why they had to do it. The mess of it all was the fact that they had to go on a strike. The fact that like these people were busting their ass, weren't getting paid enough, and they had to go on. It was like a six month strike, maybe longer. It was so long, just like so much missed opportunity and time. And I just hope that this is like a reminder to people going forward that like pay writers the right amount pay actors the right amount stop fucking people over in the industry and like hollywood just needs like a revamp hollywood needs a facelift hollywood needs to get its shit together pay people the right amount treat people the right way and like everything will be a well-oiled machine so i hope i know that their agreement for the sag after strike was a tentative three-year agreement um so i hope within three years we're not talking about this wow they can do out in three years like talking like being assuming like i'm still doing this podcast which i will be i'm putting that out there um but like yeah in three years we might have to revisit the sag after strike and that's kind of fucking crazy moving down the list uh eyebrow gate kylie jenner Haley bieber selena gomez hot mess express <laughs> if you don't know the situation i mean everyone knows it but kylie jenner posted the eyebrow thing it was like the whole just I think the whole discourse between Selena Gomez, Hailey Bieber, and anyone involved just really is like needs to be left in 2024. The fact that like there was literal beef and drama happening between the two of them in 2023 is like, what the fuck? And that's all I'm going to say on it. I hope that we don't have to talk about the two of them in the same sentence again ever again. We're probably going to have to just knowing the two of them. It'll come back around somehow. But that was an absolute mess and just like crazy crazy time to live through <laughs> um the next thing something that i will never get on board with um twitter being changed to x absolute mess i will never call twitter x it, twitter is twitter to me and it will be until the day i die i don't care what the logo says i don't care what the website is you can still get to x whatever by going to twitter.com so twitter is twitter the fact that you could buy a blue check mark this year mess blue check marks were like a sign of you know people being a, an a actual person an actual creator a verified account somebody who deserves to be verified and now you can just pay for it every month i understand like part of it i get why but it just it took the verified check is like nothing anymore and that's a mess to me there as somebody who's been online forever and has aspired to create and like something i've always been like wow it'd be really cool to have a blue check one day well now i can pay for it and i refuse to so if i ever have a blue check on my profile going down the line if you know you're with me on this journey and in a year two three whatever if i'm ever verified anywhere i am not paying for it i refuse to so that being said mess x as a whole this year everything elon did i mean it was just messy messy messiana not here with it the next thing on our list is the unfortunate reoccurring issue of things being thrown at artists on stage. This year, I, uh, I don't know what was going on with these fans and what was going on, what was in the air, what they were thinking. BB Rexa getting hit with the phone. I feel like that was what really was like the kickoff. I hate to even say it like that, the kickoff of it, but like that was the first big one when BB Rexa got hit with the phone. She like went to the hospital for it. Like her eye was fucked up after that. Then somebody jumped on stage, hit Ava Max. Um, somebody threw a drink at uh, Cardi B. She flung her microphone back. Somebody threw ashes on stage at Pink. Uh, I'm pretty sure Harry Styles was hit with like a friendship bracelet or something. It was just like a non-stop occurring thing that people were getting hit with things on stage. And I'm just, I, I, concerts are supposed to be fun. Concerts are supposed to be a good time. The artist should not be fearing that they're going to get hit with something. I, it's, I, I guess like it's been happening for a while where fans would throw bras on stage at their favorite like male artists, which like, again, it's its own thing in itself. But the way that people were throwing their mother's ashes drinks cell phones themselves on stage this year i think everyone needs a mental health check before going to a concert or buying tickets because like what the fuck that was absolutely out of control and my final mess of the year is something i never in my life thought that i would see i have been on the internet for 
longer than I would like to admit. I am so chronically online. I have watched so many YouTubers from their beginning of their career to now. So many things I've seen changed on Twitter. So many, I've been on Tumblr. I've been on like all of these different social media sites over the years. And there's been so many cancellations, so many apologies, so many this, so many that. I never in my fucking life expect to see Colleen Ballinger hit record on a video and she's playing a ukulele apologizing for being inappropriate with her fans. Girl, Miranda sings, you gotta hang it up. You gotta you cut the shit, hang up the ukulele. And now she's vlogging again like normal. I can't get into it because I'll say things that I shouldn't. Just mess, mess, mess across the board with Miss Colleen Ballinger this year, but especially that bullshit fucking ukulele apology. And just like that, we just got through 2023. How crazy. <laughs> I mean, what a year. So many pop culture moments, so many music moments, movie moments, celebrity moments, just like so much happened this year. I started my podcast, something I've been wanting to do for so long. And I, I'm so excited to see what 2024 has to hold. I have a lot of like dreams and goals and everything I want for the podcast. You know, I have, I always have like my number goals of like listeners I would like to hit by next year but if I don't hit them I'm not gonna freak out but just like I want to you know something I really want to prioritize in 2024 is this is the podcast and making it as great as possible and giving it my all I mean I not that I don't give it my all now I literally like it's my my baby I love doing this so much it's only been like 10 episodes but I'm still just like I'm like this feels right this is what this is what I like to do this is such a fun hobby activity side job kind of thing i absolutely love it and i hope everybody listening absolutely loves it i have like so many fun big plans for 2024 for the podcast for myself as far as like creating content like i said like i want to do some more video editing and vlogging and things like that over really on tiktok i think is where i'm going to prioritize my energy there uh, you're not going to see me doing actually let me not say you're not going to see me doing like dances and shit because there might be a funny silly night or a dance you know something i want to do and who knows but i just want to I really want to like celebrate my last year of my 20s by just like putting myself first and like doing whatever the fuck I want and like not caring what people think. I, I, I'm i pretty good about not caring what people think. I really, I try not to let it affect me, but I think I, the next step is just like posting whatever I want, doing what I want, having fun, making content for me and hoping it speaks to the right audience and just continuing this journey. So Thank you to everybody who's listened to the podcast so far this year. Like I said, we are 10 episodes in and that feels like a milestone. I have learned so much already. I'm excited to see what else I can learn as we keep going with this. And I just, yeah, it's it's so exciting that we are like about to start a new year. I'm getting so excited to talk about. I just, I love New Year's Eve. I love New Year's. It is such a fun new way to start a new chapter. And yeah here to 2024, here to 2023. Thanks everyone who listened to me this year talk about stupid pop culture shit into a microphone in my living room for an hour a week. I appreciate you guys so much. I, yeah, and I just can't wait to bring you guys into 2024 with us because something just tells me that 2024 is going to be way too pop to handle. And I just, I can't wait to take you guys along for the ride. So thank you guys so much for listening to the last episode of 2023, episode 10 of Too Pop to Handle. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, leave me a comment, tell me your favorite album of the year, your favorite pop culture moment of the year. If you're listening to us at a podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, Google, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you leave us a five-star review. Tell me what you're thinking. Hit that follow, subscribe, whatever button. Make sure you get notified every week. And with that, have a very happy new year and I will see you guys in 2024. Bye!